Every now and then you hit a wall on a project, and even though you look up tutorials, they never quite solve your exact problem. Imagine having a personal tutor you could message anytime who would actually help you fix it. Well, that exists now, and it's free. Stick around and I'll show you how you can start using it today. This is Google's AI Studio, powered by their Gemini AI. It allows you to record your screen while the AI guides you like a personal tutor. Now, I'm using it for Blender, but it supports many other software too, like Photoshop or Excel. All you need is a Google account to access it. There will be a link in the description for anybody who wants to try it out for themselves. Google AI Studio is a mouthful, so I'm calling it Puck, after the voice setting. Let's see if Puck is good enough to teach one of my videos. Hello again, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. It appears you have a 3D model of an eyeball monster in Blender. Is there anything specific you'd like to discuss about it? Yes, I have some textures that I'd like to add to it. How do I do that? To add textures in Blender, you'll need to use the Shading tab. First, switch to the Shading tab at the top of the screen. Then, select your eyeball monster. You should see a node editor at the bottom. Do you see a node called Principled BSDF? Let's try adding the texture node directly. Can you press Shift plus A? And then in the search menu, type image texture and click on it when it appears. Now drag a connection from the color output of the image texture node to the base color input of the principled BSDF node. Then click open in the image texture node and choose the texture file you want to use. Do you see the texture appearing on your model? Awesome, it looks like the texture has been successfully applied. So this raises some interesting questions. A couple of weeks ago, I put out a poll asking you guys what videos you'd like me to create in the future, and several of them were going to be aimed at beginners, kind of like these two videos already on my channel, which have brought in over half a million views between them. In fact, a lot of you watching this right now probably found me through one of these two videos. But this AI is making me question, is it still worth making these beginner type videos? Maybe I should just be sending beginners off to work with this AI, and that leaves me free to make more advanced content for you guys. In fact, why don't we put this idea to the test? Let's see whether or not Puck can handle some more complex tasks, like rigging. I see you have a Blender scene open with a green, one-eyed, winged character. You would like help with rigging it. First step is to add an armature. To add an armature, you first need to be in object mode. Then, press Shift plus A, go to armature, and then select single bone. Next, you need to enter edit mode to start editing the armature. Make sure the armature is selected, then press the tab key. Now that you're in edit mode, you can start adding more bones to the armature to control the character's limbs. To add more bones, select the end of the bone you want to extend, and then press E to extrude a new bone. Actually, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing the end of the bone. The character is in the way. Let's try this. Select the armature, and in the object data properties, under viewport display, select in front. This should make the armature always visible over the character. Did that help? Yeah, that's great. Uh, how do we go about adding more bones now? Okay, with the bone still selected, press E to extrude a new bone. Then move your mouse to place it where you want it. Actually, it's not um, mirroring over to the uh, other leg. How do I get it to mirror the skeleton? To do this, in edit mode, select all the bones you want to mirror, then go to the armature menu, select symmetrize. Does that do what you want? Uh, no, it doesn't look like anything happened. Symmetrize doesn't work on a single bone. My mistake. Instead, try this. It looks like we need to name the bones appropriately in order for the Symmetrize tool to work correctly. Since you now have two leg bones, could you show me how you would rename those? Okay, so I've now renamed one of the bones to leg.l. Okay, I see. It's important to name bones with a .l or .r to indicate whether they belong to the left or right side of the character so that mirroring works correctly. Now, can you rename the other leg bone to leg cure? Okay, so I now used the symmetrize and it does seem to have worked. I now have another bone called leg.r and it's on the other side. I'm glad we got the mirroring to work. Now that you have the basic leg bones mirrored, would you like to continue adding bones for the rest of the body? Okay, so I'm trying to move the bone on the left side of the body and it's not mirroring to the right side. How do I set that up? The bones are not set up to be moved together. You need to enter pose mode. 
Do you know how to enter pose mode? All right, I think we're gonna call it there. So the AI was amazing at the basic stuff, but very quickly fell apart with more complex topics. Still, Puck knows enough to be genuinely helpful. And I think its knowledge of more common programs like Microsoft Office is going to be even better. There has never been a better time to learn 3D or any software for that matter. Having a personalized tutor who will never get frustrated with you is something truly amazing. So what I would love from you guys is to go and give this Google Studio AI a try and let me know in the comments what you think. It's incredibly easy to set up. Once you've signed in through your Google account, simply go to the stream real time option on the left and click on share your screen. You'll get a pop up somewhere on your browser and you just need to tell it which program or which screen you want to share. After that, you should get another pop up asking if you want to connect your microphone so you can speak directly to it. Or you can choose to type your message if you don't have a microphone. If you could spare a minute or two and go and fill out my poll and let me know which tutorials you think are still even worth making or which ones you think I should make instead. Your feedback will genuinely shape where this channel goes over the next couple of years. Now, given that I'm probably gonna be replaced soon, I think it's only fair we give Puck the final words. Thanks for watching. It was nice meeting all of you. I'm excited to see what you create and I'm here to help you every step of the way. Let's make some amazing 3D art together.